sit with RT again. You are here to address the international body at the United Nations. Every year that you have come so far, you have advocated on behalf of the Palestinians in support of their sovereignty, in support of the Palestinians having their own state. This year, the issue of Palestinian statehood is gaining a lot of new momentum uh, in the Arab world amid the so-called Arab Spring uprisings that have taken place in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya. Uh, does the Palestinian bid for statehood come at the right time at this moment? What is your take on that? In the name of the Almighty, the most gracious and the most merciful, first I would like to greet you and all of your viewers and wish the Almighty's blessing for everyone. You asked a very important question. The people of Palestine prior, existed even prior to the Second World War, prior to the First World War. And all people, all nations have the right to self-determination. But that right was taken away in result of a previously planned hostile takeover and dishonest takeover. That right should be restored, the sooner the better. It is their right. What is important is that it comes back in its entirety and they don't once again fall prey to the political games that are often played. It's interesting uh, when you say complete state in its entirety, actually, because U.S. President Barack Obama address, addressed uh, the General Assembly uh, saying that Palestinian um, U.N. membership and statehood can't come from statements or UN resolutions. Uh, the only way there could be a peaceful plan uh, in a two-state solution in the Middle East is through negotiations. Just last year, the U.S. President said he hoped when he returned to the UN, there would be uh, a Palestinian uh, UN membership. Um, so he clearly is backpedaling in his position. Uh, at the same time, he's supported the Tunisians, the Egyptians, the Libyans, uh, saying that the will of the people determine the fate of their future. Uh, do you feel that the Palestinians uh, have a reason to feel betrayed by the U.S. president? Um, I say that perhaps we don't use the word betray. It is better, I think, what has taken place is on a higher plateau than betrayal. This is the continuation of the suppression of the rights of the Palestinian people and the Palestinian nation. You see, if they don't realize their dream of self-determination and legitimacy this year, this will occur next year. If not the next year, then the following year. This will happen, and no one can prevent that. Now, can we logically and fairly ask of anyone to establish a dialogue and negotiate with occupiers in order to get their right of self-determination. Imagine a gang of thieves come and take over your home. Once they ask to return the property to its rightful owner or owners, they give predetermined sets of rules and conditions in order to leave what they took through theft. So this is the policy that's failed. It's been proven and will be wiped away very soon, this principle of doing things. And the same goes for the Arab nations. Who do they rise up against? Against the United States' influence in the region. It is clear the world over dictators have been and are protected and supported by the United States. People rose up against the dictatorship, against Western influence, against US influence. Now, how can the United States see itself as the rightful owner of such popular movement? I think this is a trick. The fundamental point behind the popular uprising, not in the Arab world but across the world, is against the influence of the extreme capitalist system, which is inhuman at its core. And it is not just pertaining to the Arab world, it is the world over. In Europe, in Great Britain, in France, in Spain, in Greece, the world over, wherever we see today. If people are given a permission and a chance to express themselves and express their opinions, they will certainly rise up against the influence of the United States. You were referring to uh, all of the uprisings that have taken place in the Arab world and some continue to take place now. Who is benefiting? Is anyone benefiting from the instability? You see, at the end of the day, justice, freedom and the right of self-determination is the right of all people, of all nations. All nations have the right to be free under fair conditions, to live their lives and also have the freedom of choice. Everyone should recognize it as a God-given right and legitimate right. And of course, those who take advantage of such situations, some will want to put their own copyright, so to speak, on such events to be able to influence the atmosphere following these events. We believe that no one must interfere. Nations of 
fully capable of determining their own destiny. U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta uh, said that the revolutions that have taken place uh, in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, I know you're familiar with this, uh, that he said a similar revolution will happen in Iran in a matter of time. Uh, your reaction, Mr. President? It is an opinion, of course, I think that Mr. Panetta was more than likely expressing the plans set in motion by the United States or entertained by the United States and the wishes of the U.S. government. There are perhaps plans in the works against Iran. The movements that take place today across the globe are against the expansion of U.S. influence. The people of Iran have been against that for the last 32 years, and it's clear that during this time, because of the choice of the people of Iran, the United States government has been against such choice. The uprising that was taking place and continues to take place in Libya, that was against the, the hegemony of the United States? What was taking place in Libya? Yes, what is the wish of the nations is to rise up against the influence of the United States. Today, they can very quickly hold free referendums in Libya and see whether people are against the influence of the United States or not. But NATO has not and will not allow such a thing to take place. NATO occupies nations by the force of its missiles, by the force of aerial bombardment and with vast media campaigns. They will not allow the legitimization of the will and the wish of the people. This is very simple. We can hold referendums. We can hold referendums in every single one of these countries in order to determine the will of the people vis-a-vis -vis against the influence of the United States. To think the higher-ups in the United States government and the capitalist owners know this and they're always financing such moves. Iran has enjoyed very good relations with Turkey. However, Turkey has just allowed the United States to place a NATO anti-missile radar on its territory, which is obviously directed at Iran. And it is taking, Turkey is taking a harsh stand on Syrian authorities that Iran, uh, according to reports, has been supportive of. Do you believe that Iran is uh, losing its relationship with Turkey in any way, given those two points that I just laid out? Our ongoing relationship with Turkey is a very good one. It doesn't mean that we don't have differences. The establishment of those radar bases and radar systems, I think, has been imposed on the nation of Turkey. Today, the United States of America is a bully, has force and imposes its will, just as you see that it's able to impose its will on many bigger, powerful governments and nations. But this, in the long run, won't benefit the United States of America. Today, the relationships between the various nations of the world are not determined by the force of missile or weapon systems. They're determined by the people of those nations. Today, we can hold a referendum in Turkey and determine the honest opinion of the Turkish people about the influence of the United States. And at the end of the day, the will of the people will prevail. In Syria, in fact, Mr. Bashar al-Assad and Mr. Erdogan have very good relationships. They were very good friends. Iran recently launched a Russian-built Boucher nuclear power plant. Uh, the Iranian government said it would construct new ones, but without foreign assistance. Um, how can Iran do this on its own? Yes, we have launched a nuclear power plant in Boucher. We did not announce that we would set up future power plants without foreign collaboration. We're now in talks with Russia about new power plants, but we also have our own plans for the construction of another power plant, but certainly drawing on the experience of international experts. It's interesting, Mr. President, that you say that your, your message is, is usually the same because uh, U.S. President Barack Obama, when he spoke to the international community, his criticism of Iran was pretty much the same as it was the year before and pretty much similar to the criticism that George W. Bush made against Iran, which continues to be the same. So if Iran and the United States are always saying the same things year after year, how could there ever be a reconciliation? Today, what's taking place in North African and Middle Eastern nations, in Arab nations, 
The popular accomplishments are given credits to them, to the Western countries. There was a promise of a change of less military expansion, of no military expansion, of decreasing pressure on populations, of no discrimination. The people of the US should not have been pressured as they are today. Has any of this happened? Today, as we speak, all of these games that result in hyper-wealth only serve to transfer the bulk of the wealth from the have-nots to the pockets of the rich, who will only get richer. The previous US president would come to the General Assembly and command other member nations. Such and such country must do this. Did you not feel after today's speech such commands, if you will, are continuing and ongoing? We really need fundamental changes, which must take place. This is a human need. Mr. President, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. God willing, thank you very much. God bless you.